What's up, millionaires? This is your boy, Millionaire E, coming at you with a TV show episode review. Now, the TV show episode we're going to be talking about is The Flash, episode 4, season 7. Now, before we get started, My Hero Academia is debuting their first episode tomorrow, season 5. Yeah, baby! If y'all hyped about it, give me type some hypes in the chat. Now, I am a fan of this show, and tomorrow they're going to be doing these episode 0. They're going to be putting the first episode in April 3rd, but we're going to be talking about The Flash. So, this Flash episode was pretty weird. Well, not pretty weird, but pretty, hmm. First, you had Abracadabra. He came in there and he was like, you took everything from me. And before we get started, spoiler alert for anyone who has not seen the show or who has not seen this episode. So, he came in there like, you took everything from me. And Barry's all like, Man, I'm so sorry, Iris. I'm going to take you to Peru, Paris, France, everything, because I, I, I can't believe I was sitting there and I didn't even know that that clone was not you. I thought that clone was you. Because basically, I was like, man, bro. In season six, he sat there with a imposter. And I was like, bro, hold on a second, man. Look, Barry, I'm, I feel just as bad for you, but man... She gave you a whole bunch of red flags. First of all, she can't cook. Your wife can't cook. If your wife, he woke up in the morning, she had a brand new mixer, and then she also basically was cooking him a breakfast meal. Now, how's that for a little suspicious? She can't cook yesterday. Now she can cook today. Hmm. Unless she took lessons during the night to learn how to cook, that's a little suspicious. And then secondly, she acts way out of character for Iris. Iris is more, you know, sacrifice myself. I understand if you have to go fight, fight for um the good and fight evil and stuff. This Iris was like, we need to date more. Why are you going out there fighting for villains? Let the villains take care of themselves. And I'm like, hmm. Third reason. The final reason. Her father comes. Her father He's all like that, and he's like, hey, you know, Barry, keep your eye on her, because you're a little suspicious. And I'm like, bruh, you, 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 you don't see the signs? But yeah, he's basically feeling so, so sorry, because he had spent that amount of time, did not know that that was fake, that that was an imposter. He feels so bad, so he's <laughs> giving her everything. Like I said, Peru, trips, exotic foods. And she's like, whoa, 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 chill, chill, chill. But then she's also feeling bad. It's because she's been in the Mirrorverse for so long. And she's writing, now that she's out, she's writing a paper on it. Because she runs a paper company. But the thing about it is, she doesn't want to bring herself in. She's just, she feels as if she's just a reporter. And she's getting the information. Though she was in the apartment. She was a suspect. So, she's feeling that. And then you have Caitlin and... Killer Frost, who are having a mysterious headache. So, you know, basically, the reason why Abracadabra is feeling super mad is because he feels that Flash killed his family, or took his family away from him. And I'm going to explain to you this. The reason why is because during the crisis, or before the crisis, and what the crisis is, is CW has these things where they do, like, these crossovers, and they call them crisis, like Crisis of the Infinity Earth, Crisis, I don't remember some of the names, but they bring up the different shows like Black Lightning, Green Arrow, Supergirl, Legends of Tomorrow, Batwoman. They bring all those characters in there and they throw them into there and all the characters, you know, fight for the greater good. Now, this crisis, it was very, very, how do I say, led to believe that Flash was going to die. In the episode, every single time you would see Flash is going to die, Flash is going to die, Flash is going to die. There's nothing you can do about it, Flash. You're going to die. And Flash is basically like, what can we do in this and that? So once they get to the crisis, Green Arrow knows that Flash is going to sacrifice himself. But Green Arrow pulls a reverse Uno trick. He's like, uh-uh, nah, bro. I'm going to die instead of Flash. Which is good, though I miss Green Arrow. The problem with that is, is with time, one small drop, you drop one pebble into a lake, it ripples and changes everything. So what that meant was 
Abracadabra's family might have been alive when Flash didn't, if Flash died. But since Oliver died, it changed and Abracadabra's family died. So he was not happy with that. So he was trying to kill Flash and Flash's whole, everybody he loves because he was like, you took everything from me. So he ends up getting reformed. And then we see this big, huge Hulk character who kills him. She Hulk. She kills him. And we're like, whoa. And then the last part we see is that it almost seems kind of like a scene from Professor Clump 2 is that Caitlin and Killer Frost basically separate. So Killer Frost is her own person. Caitlin is her own person. Just like Professor Clump and Benny. I think, yeah. So the episode's pretty cool and I hope y'all like it if y'all seen it and share it with your fam. Tell me in the comments what you think. You excited for my academia? And like the video, subscribe, click that bell icon for more videos. And I'll see y'all later, millionaires. Bye, y'all.